So I began to pay more attention to relationship and in, and in particular then to what's going on within the relationship uh, and, and who's making the arguments for change. And if, right. if you sit down with an ambivalent person as a therapist and you argue for change. You gotta stop, you're drinking too much, you gotta stop drinking, obviously it's hurting you. It affects your family, it affects your health, it, you could lose your job. I mean, you know, you know these things that you still do it. Exactly, that's right. I mean, the, and and all of those things you feel like saying. That's yeah. <laughs> what Steve and I call it the writing reflex. You want to fix it. You want to set it right. You know, so so it's natural to take up that side of the argument. The question is, what happens when you do that with an ambivalent person? And what typically happens is you'll then hear from the client the other side of the ambivalence. So if you say to a person what you just said, right. they're likely to say, well, I'm not sure it's that bad. And, you know, I don't know if I really need to do this. And we used to call that denial in the addiction field. Okay. It, it, it's simply the, the predictable result of talking to an ambivalent person and taking up one side of the argument. Uh, and they would naturally respond with the other. So you wind up acting out almost like psychodrama what is really their internal ambivalence between the two of you with the therapist having the good lines right. and, and the client having the kind of counter-change lines. And that might be sort of fun, except that clients tend to believe themselves. So as they hear themselves arguing against change, they're literally talking themselves out of change. 